You are a word made flesh. John 1 verse 1. I like this scripture. I like all the scriptures. But I love this one. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. And the word was God. God has never been without a word. And God can always speak for himself. God and his word are one. Just the same as you and your word, me and my word. The words I have come out of me. They proceed from me. So it is with the word, who is Jesus Christ, he proceeds from God and is God. There is no difference between a man and his word. And there is no difference between God and the word. So many people try to make God and and the word two separate things. But God could talk for himself. Oh, hallelujah. God could talk for himself. He doesn't have to have another to die for him or to live for him or to go to earth for him or to speak for him. God can come to us all by himself. God can talk to you all by himself. In the beginning. Oh, the same God that was in the beginning is in the 21st century and in the now today. In the beginning, this God, this speaking, talking, living, acting, mighty God, all-powerful being, was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. Not two separate persons. No, no. That's what religion teaches. Because they do not believe that Jesus himself is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. Verse 14, I love this verse too. It says, And the word, that is God, became flesh and dwelt among us. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. We are children of God. We are the Lord's children. We are sons of God. So we too are a word made flesh. You are a word made flesh. This is why we must preach the gospel. We must share the gospel. We must preach the word, share the word, speak the word, often, every day, live it, incubate it, think about it, speak it out, talk about it to another person because you are a living word and you've got to keep that word alive by meditating on him who is the word, the one true God. You are a word because you were created in his image and the word created a word in the beginning. <clears throat> There's a psalm which says about, uh, talks about us being formed in the mother's womb. I think it's Psalm 139. Talks about us being formed in our mother's womb. And God knew us before we were born. Before you were born, God knew you. God knew me. Well, what did he know us as? Because uh, when we came out of the womb was when we took on flesh and blood. Ah, there lies a secret. What was you before you was born? If God knew you, what did he know you as? I believe you was a word. You still are a word. Paul said you are a living epistle read by all men. God knew you in your mother's womb as a word. Hmm. Now you're finding out your purpose. Going back to what you was. That's the secret of life. Find out what you was. Not what you will be, but what you was when he knew you in your mother's womb. Because he told Jeremiah, in your mother's womb, that's where I anointed you and called you and ordained you as a prophet. <clears throat> he was a word before he became a prophet with flesh and blood, bones. Let me share this quick thought with you found in Luke chapter 1. Allow me to read it to you. It's about uh, John the Baptist. Remember he leapt in his mother's womb at the salutation of Mary. <laughs> it says there, And Mary said, Behold the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. That's what Mary said to the angel Gabriel. 
Be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. He told her how she would give birth uh, to the, the God-man child, Jesus Christ. And Mary arose in those days, verse 39, Luke chapter 1, and went into the hill country with haste and into the city of Judah, and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the word, when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leapt in her womb. In other words, not only did Elizabeth hear it, but the babe in her womb heard it. John the Baptist heard the word. Why? Because he was the word. When he was in the wilderness, he saw Jesus coming before he knew who Jesus was. he never seen Jesus before. And he recognized him. Why? He recognized the word. He recognized the words that he spoke. What am I saying? I'm saying that to know our calling, to know our destiny, and to know our ministry in life, we must have that word. That word which God put in you right in the beginning of time before you came into this world. You must know that word. That is the word you've got to preach to your generation. But it takes time for that word in you to grow, to mature, and to take on flesh. But you recognize it when preachers preach it and there's a leap in your spirit. Mm. You recognize it. You jump for joy. There's a Holy Ghost salutation. There's a manifestation in this mortal body. There's a quickening, a jumping, a leaping, uh, a going forth with the word because God has spoken it to you. Mm, that's the gospel I want to preach. That's the message I have today to give to you. Look for the leap. Mm, may this word cause you to leap and get up out of your sleep <laughs> and rise up on your feet to be the man and woman of God that God created you to be. You are a word made flesh. Ask yourself, what is that word that I am becoming? Mm. What is this word that I am becoming? Because you are Jesus to somebody. Yes, you are Jesus to somebody. You are the word that they need today. So you must share what you are, who you are, and what God has given you. You are a word made flesh. God bless you and have a great God given day. This is Paul Thomas. Visit me on www.pennycastle.tv and www.imagebreakers.live. Have a great God given day.